Hello, my name is Lucy Ame and welcome to another episode of Find Happiness where we go up close and personal with our guests to talk about their journey through life, career and relationship and the challenges they have fought through life and the changing moments. Today with us, our guest is an American, he's a screenwriter, he's a father and most importantly, he when he says I should introduce him like that. Welcome, Mr. Ryan Gibson. Thank you very much. I'm thank happy you to be so, here. Thank you so much. We're so honored that you're on our show. No, I'm honored to be involved in this. I love the, thank this you. Is the conversation that you guys are thank having. Thank you. Welcome to Find Happiness. Please tell us more about yourself. Ah, my favorite, unfavorite topic. Um, <laughs> um, as I said, uh, I'm, I'm a screenwriter, screenwriting instructor. I work in film and television um, on shows that you don't necessarily care about. Um, and movies that you, you hopefully have not, or maybe you have seen. <laughs> so who knows? Um, so it's unimportant. That's not what we're here to talk about. Um, I think what's important is I'm a father um, of three, and I am a human being who understands that at the end of the day, um, my greatest prayer for myself and the one I offer any of my friends is their greatest happiness. So having a conversation about that at the moment that I was told about it, I immediately got excited. Mm -hmm. So Thank you so much for coming. So, um, do you please tell us about your story so far, the challenges you've faced in life, and you know, <laughs> everything, basically. Basically, she tell you everything about me in the next five minutes. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> I was born by the river. No. Um, no, um, so, uh, immigrant from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, moved to um, America when I was young. Um, single mother for a long time, she got married, uh -huh. uh, stepfather. Um, who was um, there for her and uh, caused a lot of trauma in my life, oh. um, unfortunately. Um, but you know that's all part of the, the journey that we all find ourselves on, on this third rock from the sun. Mm -hmm. um, I currently, I'll jump ahead a little bit. Okay. Uh, currently, I'm I'm writing a book about that journey. Oh. Um, um, it's almost done. It's pretty much done. Um, it should be out hopefully at the top of the year. Mm -hmm. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Okay. Um, um, and it's called um, I'm Sorry My Molestation Inconvenienced You. And it speaks about my dealing with childhood molestation mm -hmm. at the hands of my stepfather mm -hmm. and what that took from me as a kid, um, the, the challenges it caused me as a teenager, mm -hmm. and what it required me to do to find peace and find happiness mm -hmm. as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, trauma is trauma. It's one of the things I talk about in my book. Um, so it doesn't matter what it is. For me, my trauma showed up in the word of molestation, mm -hmm. but for other people it could be anything. Um, so whatever your trauma is, the reality is that if you don't deal with it, don't worry, it will deal with you. Absolutely. So if you don't start addressing it in some real way, mm -hmm. um, and for me addressing it was therapy uh, and truth. Telling people, I told everyone, I went on a truth spiral I called it, mm -hmm. where I told, when once I got to a place that I could say it, I went and told everyone that I considered a friend or family. Mm -hmm. um, some people reacted well. Some people reacted not so well. Mm -hmm. um, some people felt more pain than I did uh -huh. <laughs> in the telling. Mm -hmm. um, um, and that's always interesting. And I had to learn, even within that, within expressing my truth, that you have to give people the space to feel however they wanted to feel around sure. it. Um, so that journey's been its own thing. Um, and it's been difficult at times horrific at others, yeah. um, but I know that, and this has been the hardest lesson, is that everything that has happened, the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. have all benefited who I am today. And if I take even one of those things away, I lose essentially who I am right now. Mm -hmm. As much as I would be, I would be lying if I didn't say it'd be great not to have experienced the molestation as a child, mm -hmm. and that could have been taken away, I would have been happy for that to not to have happened. Mm -hmm. I realized that if it didn't, I wouldn't probably be here because the choices that I made as a result of that mm -hmm. led me to Nigeria, led me to Africa, mm -hmm. led me to teaching, mm -hmm. um, led me to screenwriting. Mm -hmm. I probably would have been a lawyer. Oh. Um, I probably would have done that. And I probably would have been an unfulfilled lawyer because I still was a storyteller mm -hmm. even before this happened. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that I would have made the hard choices to leave home and go to California. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I, I think the, the pain of what I experienced gave made me brave mm. and gave me courage to fight mm -hmm. even in ways that I'm still in therapy today unraveling and learning about myself. Mm. So. 
Right. I hope that gives you a little bit of an answer. Yes. Maybe too much of one. Yes, <laughs> no, 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 it did. Um, so while you were, you were depressed, of course, mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. And while you were in that state, what gave you that hope that someday soon I'm going to get out of this, I'm going to make something good of myself, I'm going to become something regardless of whatever my stepfather is putting right. me through, you know, and all of that. What gave you that strength? What made you... Absolutely nothing. Hmm. I got to be real. There was nothing. It wasn't a moment where I was sitting there going, oh, this is going to get better. Hmm. When you're in depression, which is the insidious nature of depression, mm -hmm. it's like being in a dark room. If we turn the lights off right now, the room was pitch black and it's dark outside. You don't, you can't tell where you are from anything else. Mm -hmm. If you move, you might hurt yourself. If you don't move, you feel stymied by the room itself. Mm -hmm. So you feel trapped. I went through a really rough time for about a year and a half where in college, mm -hmm. where I had forgotten I had suppressed it. Mm -hmm. The memory of the depression for about four and a half years. Okay. I, and it was some of the best time because I didn't have that weight. So um, when the, but I still had something. The molestation was gone, but the weight of it was mm -hmm. still hanging around. Mm -hmm. And it was building, building. And when it finally came back, all the memories hit me like a ton of bricks and it knocked me off of my feet. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even go to school. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I would get up in the morning to go take a class and I would be, or and if I could get myself up to go, I would go to the class, I would sit down, open my book, look at the teacher, look down and then blink. And it was like, okay, that was a good class, time to go. I would have lost all 45 minutes, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And I'd be sitting there going, what just happened? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, it, and it happened every day, and it got worse and worse. And you get dragged down by it. Mm -hmm. You feel like there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. What helped me may not necessarily be helpful to other people, mm -hmm. um, but what ended up saving me, because I did attempt suicide. It got that bad. Mm -hmm. and when, But that was a wake-up call. That moment of being 19, 20, I think I was, mm -hmm. when that happened, it was such a shock. Because I woke up and found myself in the bathtub with my wrist cut mm -hmm. and trying to understand how did I get here? Mm -hmm. And then realizing, oh, I did this. Mm -hmm. And then catching myself and going, is this really what you want? Mm -hmm. But that's even a hard question when you're in the dark space to figure out what it is that you really want. I couldn't answer that. But what I did know is I didn't want this. I couldn't tell you what I did want, but I could tell you what I did know. Mm -hmm. And in that space of even darker confusion, um, I found writing, or it always was there. It refound me. Mm -hmm. And I was working on a story, and the, the characters, and it's gonna sound crazy to anybody who's not a writer, mm -hmm. but the characters in my head were yelling and screaming at me, you gotta tell our story. Mm -hmm. You have to tell our story. Mm -hmm. You can't go yet. Just tell our story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I spent the next year writing their story. Mm. And in writing their story, I found a little bit of light and a little bit of breathing room. And it gave me a chance to just kind of... And when that happened, I felt a little better. Mm. And a little better when you're depressed, it's, it's the difference between Legos and Abuja. <laughs> it's huge. It's this huge... You don't even realize yeah. the distance between it yeah. until you're on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, and once I got to that place, um, and I finished the, the, I remember I finished it, and I knew in my head, and once I turned this in, mm -hmm. that I probably was going to go finish what I started. Mm -hmm. And I turned it in, and everybody was like, this is so good. We got to do this. We got to do this. Mm -hmm. And then it was another thing I had to go do. Mm -hmm. Now real people were telling me, come on, we got to go do this. Mm -hmm. We got to go do this. Mm -hmm. We got to go do this. Mm -hmm. And I went, and I poured all my, my energy for another year to get that done. Mm -hmm. And when that was done, now, two years removed from that point of darkest pain, mm -hmm. I was I had found myself in a little bit even better space than that. Mm -hmm. So I was even better than I had been. Mm -hmm. So from Abuja to Niger, mm -hmm. now, you know, so now it's a whole other space. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't happy, but I wasn't sad. Okay. So I found some medium place in the middle that felt, and the word I always use is okay. Mm -hmm. I was just and I got really good at being okay. Mm. And then once I was able to be good at being okay, I allowed myself the choice to go, okay, I can be happy now. And I did, and I made that a conscious choice, mm. but I still didn't deal with the, the reason for the depression. Yeah. 
back, which did come back. <laughs> and it came back later. And then I finally was able to get to um, therapy and speak to a therapist and really start to deal with the stuff, mm. the unpacking mm. of all the suitcases and really address all the pain, mm -hmm. all the anger, all the shame, all of it. Mm. And once I did that, I started to feel better. Because you're never well or healed when you're dealing with any kind of emotional trauma. Yeah. You just can hope for better. Mm. And I was definitely leaning into better. Mm. And that's been the journey so far. <laughs> Just give you a I'm so sorry for everything that you it's went fun. through. I, I think I, one of the things my therapist, <laughs> no, no, my therapist, one of the things she, that I had to work through when I tell people, they immediately go, we're so sorry, we're so sorry. And I usually would go, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. Because I'm trying to manage your emotion. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I've learned now is to simply go, thank you. Oh. But I'm okay. And I'm better than I was yesterday, and I'll be better tomorrow. Absolutely. And when this book finally comes out, mm -hmm. and I've said it, mm -hmm. And I've said it loudly, mm -hmm. as a black man mm -hmm. in America and in the world, mm -hmm. to be able to talk about um, sexual abuse mm -hmm. and to talk about this type of trauma and how you can get over it and get through it and not let it be a, a stain on your soul. To be able to talk about this, because I know it's happening. Right it's, now as we're it doing is, this, it is. there's a little boy in, in Legos this is happening to. True. There's about 10 of them. Because the statistics in America say it's like one in every three women have been sexually assaulted mm -hmm. or will be sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. And they say it's like one in every five boys. Mm -hmm. And I immediately go, that's a lie. I know that number is greater. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is that for men versus women, we don't report it. Mm -hmm. So when it happens to you, you immediately feel like, well, you must be gay. Because mm -hmm. it happened to you. Mm -hmm. like, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. um, you're broken. Mm -hmm. You're less than a man. It's attacking your macho, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. So either you overcomplicate and become now this super machismo, toxic dude who's like, I gotta have sex with everything. Mm -hmm. Every woman I see, I gotta have sex with. Mm -hmm. You know, to prove how much of a man I am, yeah. or I'm gonna be really hyper aggressive. I mean, it shows up in all of these negative ways. Mm -hmm. And I say negative because they're not supporting who the person really is at their core, mm -hmm. which is that kid who this happened to, True. who no one is talking about. Who no one is helping, who no one is addressing the pain of. So that's the work that I've been doing, and it's the work that I hope that this book um, brings out and illustrates to people that they need to be doing. Because in the end, trauma usually has most of us, it happens when we're younger. Mm. And we think as the adult, we have judgment on the kid that it happened to. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you know better? Why weren't you smarter? Why were you even there? Why did you tell someone? Mm -hmm. We beat the kid up in our head. And, you, and the reality is, because they were a kid, they weren't yeah. supposed to know better. Yeah. Why would you think they would know better? Yeah. And when you get to that place, you are able to look at that kid and then you can hold them in your arms, which I did. I had to do that work. And hold them and go, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to see what I can do to help you, mm -hmm. to manage what happened to you mm -hmm. by making different choices in my life. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not easy. But it's necessary. I'm so glad that you put all of that in the book. And we're <laughs> oh. going to get to read it soon. Yes, very soon. I'm so. so glad for where you are right now. Thank so, you. Thank you. at this point of your life, mm. are you going to say you have found happiness and you're fulfilled <laughs> to an extent and you're happy? Uh, fulfillment is big, man. Mm -hmm. a, I, I got too many things I want to do. Okay. Like my thing is, as soon as I reach one peak, mm -hmm. I look up and look, there's another one. Yeah. So, for me, right now, I'm as happy as I can be in the who I am today. But I know that I'm, I'm probably really happy right now because we just finished doing this great work with the students. Yeah. And my greatest happiness right now around that is when I look in their eyes and I know that they get something. That I've just shared something with them and they get it. And I know that they're going to take it and they're going to use it to make their lives better. Um, so for me, that's been the greatest joy right now. Tomorrow, I don't know what it's going to be. And I try, and it's hard, not to look at tomorrow. I try to stay focused on where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And right now, I can say I'm happy. Fulfilled? No. I still got, fulfilled, I still want more. I'm glad that you're happy with yeah, me, right? I still want more. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. that you're happy. So, um, I would like you to talk to our audience, people mm -hmm. who are watching, who are going through. Whatever their trauma whatever is. Whatever their trauma <laughs> is. 
could be the same thing that you yeah. passed through. It could be something else that is traumatic to them and has kept them at a place, and they feel like oh, they failed, and they can't move move on from here. They are broken, you know. Uh, Please tell them. Something. I, I'll tell you this: you are not alone, which is something that I know I needed to hear, and it took a long time when I got to a place to to receive it. That. Trauma as a whole is not a, a, a new experience, but a very human experience. We've all been through something. We've all gone through an up and down, left or right, that's impacted our life. It all comes back to how do you want it to continue to impact your life? Are you pretending like it didn't happen? And if so, I promise you it's still impacting you because it takes a lot of work to keep pretending like something didn't happen. Much easier to just accept that it happened and work through it. So for those of you that are struggling with any kind of trauma and, and you're in pain and you're angry and you're, or you're ashamed or whatever it is you're feeling that makes you feel like you can't address it, I promise you that you can. It's not easy. If you think it's easy, if anybody tells you it's easy, do not believe them. It is not easy. It is hard. It is the hardest work you will ever do. But it is the work of your soul. It is the work that carries you forward. It is the work that no one can give you you have to give yourself. And when you get to the other side, whenever that is, because I'm not on the other side, I'm still very much doing the work. But when you get to the other side, you can look back, like what did God say after he, he finished building the earth? He looked at it and said it was good. And for me, that is the highest compliment, to be able to look back on my life at some point and go, it was good. Mm -hmm. So I hope for all of you guys, I wish nothing but happiness, I wish nothing but joy, and that you will address your pain, your trauma, so that it doesn't address you. Because I promise you, it will. So don't let it. Get to it before it gets to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you. Ryan. Yes, you can. <laughs> no, I appreciate oh, it. I'm Thank so you. Sorry for no, you. No, it's okay. Because all those things got me here. Yeah. I got a hug from her. So I think it was worth it. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for coming out on you. our show. We really appreciate thank you. you for and thank you so uh, much. God finding happiness. I yeah. want to get a mug. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Bye. Ryan.